Hello, in this video we're in the multiple linear regression setting and we're going to calculate the press statistic which is called the prediction sum of squares. Now it involves data splitting and model validation and this is a huge 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 topic in machine learning where you take a large data set you split it into a training data set meaning you fit the model and then you take that model and on an independent data set called a validation data set, you see how well it does in predicting the data. Um, big, big, big topic. And we're actually not going to talk about that. Um, the, you know, since I've taken this course, this field, you know, as data splitting, model, val model validation, machine learning, has really blossomed. And I probably wouldn't do it justice. So we're going to, I'm not going to say much more about that. Cross-validation is where you think you don't quite have enough data to create two, you know, two data sets, a training data set and a validation data set. So what you do is you repeatedly split your current data. So you, you set some aside for the validation data you tra in, and some for the training. You train the data and then you use that model on the, the validation. A very popular one, uh, cross-validation called k-fold cross-validation, and that's where you split it the data into k groups. And so, let's say ten-fold cross-validation. So you have ten groups, or ten, you know, yeah, ten groups of your data, and then each group has a turn at being the validation set. So one, you, you know, group one is set out. You fit the data on the other nine groups. And then that model you you use on the validation data set to see how well it predicts the data. And then you repeat. You go with group two, you set it aside, you repeat it. And that's called cross-validation. And the press statistic is a type of cross-validation. It, it uses what's called infold cross-validation. So you set one data point aside, you fit the model on the other n minus one data point, then you use that model to see how well it predicts that one data point that you set out. And then you repeat on the other n minus one data point. So there's n fits to the data. And so the press statistic uses n full cross validation. One data point is set out. The model is fit on the remaining n minus one data points. The model is used to see how well it can predict the one data point set aside. This is repeated on all n observations. So a graphical illustration of what is happening. Now this is a this is a busy uh, illustration here, but stay with me. So the little x's are our data points, and there's one data point up here. So these are all our x's, the data point. So the pre you the press statistic is calculated like this. So you set this data point aside, don't use it, and then you fit the model to these other data points, and then you get an equation, maybe something like this. Then you see how well it predicts this data point. So you take the fitted value with, from the, you know, you, without the data point to that data point. That's what this is. So it's called a press residual. So it's that data point minus the fit at the ith data point, but we didn't use that ith data point to come up with this fit. That's called a press residual. And then you repeat that process for all in observations. Now, this is this is actually not a bad way to do it because when we so this data point is independent of these, right? Because we took a random sample. So when we fit the model with these data points and then use it to predict this, this model is independent of that data point. So in a sense, it's trying to replicate what may happen in the real world. You know, once we fit this data and we go and use it in the real world, you know, we're, we're testing it on independent data points or we're using it on independent data points. And this is kind of what it's trying to replicate. 
in, in this. And then what you do is you remember this press residual for all in observations. Okay? And then we're going to combine those to the press test statistic. But I also fit one point here. So this line here is actually not part of the press statistic or press residuals. This would be the full fitted model. And then the Y value minus the fit right here, that's the normal residual, right? That's what we've looked at in simple linear regression. And, um, and we've you done a sum of it a little bit with multiple linear regression. Okay, so let, we need to develop some notation here. So Y I hat, so that's the fitted model with using the full data points. So we use that X observation times the least squares estimates that we got obtained from the full model. That is uh, this point right there. Right? Where X I is the I throw of, of the design matrix. Now this Y I comma minus I hat that is this point. So what it says is it's the least squares estimate obtained without using the ith data point, but then we use the ith point to predict the ith y value. So that's what this is. And then of course that residual is called the press residual. Now the press statistic is you square each of these residuals. Because sometimes the y is going to be bigger than the fit and you get a positive. But sometimes the y is going to be less than the fit and you get a negative. So what we do is we square them and then so we, to always get a positive number. And then we add them all up, you know, and, and uh, that's what's called the press statistic. Okay. So using matrix notation, so we have this is the model y is equal to x beta plus epsilon. And if we were to put it in matrix notation, these are all the Y's. This is the design matrix. This is the K plus 1 beta parameters. And this is the air term. So when we calculate the press residual, we have to remove this observation. right? And then we fit this model with the N minus 1 data points. But notice we still have the same number of parameters, right? So when we multiply that across, there's still k plus 1 parameters. And we go down, but we just don't use this observation. And then that, we obtain this. So we obtain a least squares estimate of these beta parameters without that ith observation. But we can use, reuse that ith observation to count times the least squares estimates without that ith observation to come up with a fitted value that predicts this y ith observation but without the ith observation in it. And then of course that's the press residual. Now we use the press statistic to compare candidate models. So we have lots of predictor variables. So this first column is all ones that corresponds with the beta zero parameter. And then these are predictors. But sometimes we may have K minus two predictors. We have made K plus three predictors. So we're testing lots of models. And in those models, we can calculate the press statistic. So do an infold cross validation on that, the, you know, using those models. And what we do is, so for each candidate model, we can calculate the press statistic. And it turns out the smaller the press statistic, the, or the small the press values are better and that so we can use that in our model selection process now how do we calculate this and to me th um, this is absolutely crazy and I and I don't say statements like that I remember studying this a long time ago and I thought that it's just marvelous that because this seems so labor intensive you have to do in fit so if you have a data set of you know 2,000 data points, you have to do 2,000 fits. That seems crazy. Well, it turns out that you don't have to. You only have to fit the data set with the full model 
and then we can pick pieces out of that and calculate this press this infold cross validated press statistic and to me it's just mind-boggling so this this is it so the press residual which is this can be calculated from the normal residual and the ii diagonal of the hat matrix of the full design matrix and then the press statistic of course you square this and then add them up and that's the press statistic so what we're going to prove is this and then this piece is easy because you just add them up so we're in this proof we're going to make reference to a video i put out called the woodbury matrix identity and sherman morrison formula uh, uh, wsm so here we have the full design matrix so with this is the ith row and notice the little uh, sort of script x that means it's the ith row and then up here we have all the other observations all the other observations and then the x i minus i is we take out that ith row and again these are matrices that's the ith row this is a matrix and so from this video we show that this matrix multiplication without the ith row is actually equal to this and that's a it's actually a straightforward calculation but it's in this video here it's in the example on page two we also show that the inverse of this matrix can be represented like this now we need this because when we take out an observation and then we calculate the least squares estimate we have to have this okay and we showed it's this in in this video um, also the hat matrix is you know this it's x x transpose x inverse x transpose now if we want let's say the ij observation of this that means you take the ith row and the jth column and then when you do that multiplication you get the ij element of this but it, what if we want the i ith diagonal you take the ith row the ith column which ends up being the ith row because it's transposed do that multiplication you get the i ith diagonal element well that's what this is right so we're going to make use of that in our proof so the last page let's let's jump right in so the press residual is the data point minus the fitted value using all the data points but the ith observation right but we're using the ith data point to make that prediction okay so the least squares estimate of this is is this right here right that's just by definition and we've been doing that in all these videos in my playlist generalized linear models regression or general linear models regression okay so but in in the video woodbury sherman morse formulas we showed that that was this so we put it in there otherwise everything else comes down then we multiply these into those and we get this right so this is this piece this is this piece now look at look at here so xi x transpose x inverse xi that's the hii and also we're going to since this is a fraction we're going to make these fractions so we multiply this by one minus hii same way here which is this and then we put that as hii and then so nothing nothing new there but notice this so that minus comes in there and makes that a plus so we have plus this and minus the same thing so those go away and then we're only left with this times that minus one which is what this is so everything comes down the minus you know is here and then we have this now i just put it over the one minus hii to save paper here now we need a note before we continue right we're going to continue down but we need this note if we use the full design matrix times x so we split the design matrix into the ith row and everything else and we do the y the same way and when we do this product we get this now let's take this and move it to the back and we can rethink about these pieces 
as this and then when you do that multiplication this is really the design matrix minus the ith row and the y vector minus the ith observation so we have this now if we were to take that and subtract it to the other side we have an expression for this right which is right here in our formula so we put that into the equation so this is just repeated here but we use our updated formula and then we multiply that in and we get this so um, notice here though that this piece right here is HII so we have HII YI and then we subtract the same thing so those go away uh, this right here is the least squares estimate using the full data matrix so we can we can put that here and here and here and then of course we carry along this but that's the fitted model at the ith observation that's what it's that's what it's represented by well this is the residual and that's what we wanted to show well I hope you enjoyed that I sure did please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one thanks bye